This is nine outlandish and possibly deadly things used as contraceptives. <laughs> <clears throat> Number one, animal guts. No glove, no love. But in the days before latex and condoms, you had to get creative with what you made the glove out of. And one of the most common choices was animal intestines. To make them more comfortable for both parties, ancient people used to soak the guts in warm water or milk first. <laughs> Those smell <What>? good. <laughs> as far as bizarre contraceptives go, at least this one probably works, as long as the intestine is tightly tied on one end and properly cleaned. It ought to stop sperm splatter. You just have to get over the thought that you've wrapped your dong in something that was once up an animal's butt. Man, can you imagine what, like, intestine casing soaked in milk? <laughs> <laughs> Is someone cooking chitlins? <laughs> <laughs> uh, two, blacksmith's cooling water. A uh, Greek doctor, Sor <laughs> Soranus, <laughs> it's probably Soranus, uh, came up with what he probably thought was an ingenious idea in the second century. He theorized women could prevent pregnancy if they jumped backward seven times after sex and chugged the water blacksmiths used to cool metal. Of course it didn't work, until the metal remnants started building up in the body, rendering the lady sterile. That's it. She, uh, If she didn't die from heavy metal poisoning first, uh, fun fact, this method kind, kind of survived until World War I. Women would flock to work in factories, so lead exposure would make them sterile. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I need a job in one of the lead factories. You know, that reminds me that I think because of uh, oil and gas, like, there's been released, like, so much lead in the air that the human population is just stupider now than it once was. That could be it. Well, and we uh, did an article a long time ago that said, like, the average sperm count is going down because of all like the you know plastic pollutants and mm. stuff in the air. So it's like ugh. Uh, number three, I actually just learned about this one on a, on a podcast I listened to. Lemons. Um, have some lemon before sex? No, we don't mean drinking some lemon juice. People from around the world rely on cutting a lemon in half and shoving it into a woman's vagina. It was supposed to work as a primitive diaphragm. In a way, it sort of did. If the fit was right, the lemon could theoretically stop sperm from getting in, into the womb. Additionally, lemon juice is a mild spermicide. You just have to ignore the horrendous vaginal infections you could get. Um, and apparently on this podcast I listened to, like, uh, Casanova, he would do this. He would bring lemons around with him and do the lemon trick. <laughs> What do you think a woman would think of that, though? Like, here, put this acidic... <laughs> the lemon man cometh. <laughs> put this acidic fruit in your snatch. Uh, number four, crocodile crap. Um, okay, so putting a lemon up there isn't a good idea, but what about some crocodile dung? That was a bright idea ancient Egyptians came up with. This non-functional contraceptive method is recorded on a uh, medical papyrus from the 17th century BCE. The Egyptians thought that sperm would get tangled in the thick, sticky crocodile crap. We're going to go out on a limb and guess that no Egyptian woman actually agreed to try this method. I mean, at that point, shouldn't you just do it in the butt? Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be putting your dick in shit anyway. Yeah. Uh, number five, Coca-Cola. A cold Coke is a refreshing drink to have post-coitus. And in the 1950s and 60s, people thought it could prevent pregnancy, too. Just shake up a bottle till it's ready to pop, open the cap, quickly slip the mouth up the vagina, and let her rip. People at the time <laughs> thought the carbonic uh, acid in Coke would kill sperm. The bottle was also considered to be the perfect shape for an impromptu douche. In case you're eyeing a Coke bottle right now, stop right there. This doesn't work, and it'll only make a, a lady susceptible, susceptible to infections and STDs. <laughs> Man, the ideas people got from out of nowhere. <laughs> you know. uh, number six, animal testicles. Conceiving a baby generally requires a pair of balls somewhere along the chain of events. If you apply a twisted enough logic, it makes sense why ancient people thought animal testicles might have some power to stop pregnancy. How the testicles are used depends on the time period and location. Uh, in China, for example, women would grind beaver balls into a powder and enjoy it as a supposedly contraceptive after sex, after sex tea. 
in plan Europe, B for in, B for beaver. <laughs> in Europe, testicles were more magical. All the woman had to do was wear a chain of weasel gonads around her neck or thigh. How many weasels did you have? <laughs> we don't know why they thought that would work. I know poor weasel population no. in those days just losing losing their ball. <laughs> It would be funny to have like a necklace full of nothing but <laughs> weasel balls. Your Wilma Flintstone. Yeah, oh, yeah, the pearl necklace. Uh, number seven, squat and sneeze. Uh, not everybody in ancient Greece was on board Soranus's heavy metal water idea. Instead, other doctors of the time came up with more a more natural solution. After dancing the horizontal mambo, they advised that women should assume a stable squatting position. Then she needed to sneeze. We suppose the idea was that the force of the sneeze would squirt all the mangoo out of her privates. You can see the logic, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, number eight. <laughs> <laughs> just, just queef cum everywhere. <laughs> Get it all out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Uh, number eight, juniper berries. Uh, like the Chinese, Native Americans believed in the contraceptive power of tea. But instead of beaver testicles, they made the tea out of juniper berries. And they were actually uh, onto something. Juniper berries make uterine linings unsuitable for embryonic growth. If a pregnant woman consumes a lot of juniper berries, she might have a miscarriage. It's not a stretch to think juniper berries would therefore prevent contraception as well. But just to be clear, this is not a reliable method, if it works at all. And finally, number nine, mercury. Ah, good old mercury, the miracle medicine of the ancient world. It's been used as uh, everything from a common cold medicine to an elixir of immortality. With such varied uses, it's no wonder it was taken as a contraceptive as well. Just swig some mercury after sex and you're good to go. We hope we don't have to tell you that, in reality, mercury is highly toxic. The only thing it'll do is kill you, not prevent pregnancy. But then again, we suppose you can't get pregnant if you're dead, huh? They got us there. It is weird that, like, mercury, of all things, was used in so much stuff back in the day. Yeah, it was, I think it's, it just looks cool. I think people That's are stupid true. enough to be like, all right, this is cool, we should use it. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get mercury? Or is there like natural deposits of mercury? How does that I work? Think so. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It, it has to be mined, I assume. Do they still use it in like thermometers? Oh yeah. Yeah, I think so. Mad Hatters, like uh, you guys know the story, right? The Hatters they used to use mercury. Oh, and they would go like crazy or whatever. That, then they were yeah called Mad Hatters for that. <laughs> I heard that once and I totally forgot, but you're right. Yeah. Speaking of hats, I saw two people this week dressed like Dickens characters wearing top hats <laughs> go down the street. And I was like, it is I've Christmas never seen time. this in my life. And now I see I saw it twice. Christmas in Portland. <laughs> you see some naked people. You see people with top hats. <laughs> you see everything. We've got like this stylish old guy in our building, and he was one of them. But he also has like a, a tri corner like pirate hat he wears sometimes. <laughs> I'm like this guy is pimping. <laughs> He's probably like seventy. <laughs> yeah, I was I was driving earlier today, like near downtown. I, I saw this black guy, and I was like, "This guy's really sharply dressed." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is everybody dressing up so nicely all of a sudden? <laughs> <This> Portland <laughs> people dress like shit. <laughs> That's true. It does have that reputation. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when we moved here, everyone was like, we went to the grocery store and they're like multiple people wearing like pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was super excited. <laughs> Everybody here just dresses down. It's yeah. nice, you know? <laughs> I told him, I, I kind of feel like I should start like wearing like like weird fashion shit like cloaks and shit <laughs> just like <laughs> really like outlandish shit <laughs> just see what kind of reaction i get yeah. which like a normal down to earth guy right. <laughs> wearing cloaks and stuff. <laughs> yeah that'd be cool <laughs> i'm sure some cop would get fidgety <laughs> like a cloak uh oh <laughs> He would be. he would feel weird like trying to arrest somebody with a top yeah. hat. You're like, uh, <laughs> sir. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> How do I address you? <laughs> you come with me, my lord. <laughs> You should find one of those Dickens guys and be like, boy, what day is this? 